Hey guys, it's Jim. Thanks for tuning in or coming back or whatever it is you're doing, and I appreciate it. Uh, wherever you are, I hope you're also having a great day. I'm here to talk about photography and editing a photo, and I'm going to talk about everybody's favorite time of day to shoot, and that is noon under a hot sun. No, I'm kidding. Uh, we're going to talk about sunset. Everybody loves sunset. I love sunset. You love sunset. We all love sunset. Uh, and that's because you often get good light, and if you don't, you can fake it. Um, so, um, <laughs> I'm going to fake it a little bit in this photo, to be honest, but um, I'm mostly talking about uh, shooting at sunset because it's a popular time of day for us photographers, and we all get kind of excited about it. I've got a photo here, and it looks like this. Boom. And um, it wasn't that great, to be honest. Now, the scene was gorgeous. I was in La Jolla, California. I was shooting with my friend Scott Davenport. Uh, I'll put a link down below if you haven't followed Scott. He's got a great YouTube channel, great photography, great guy, all kinds of great stuff. Check him out. Um, but uh, I was out there shooting with Scott, and we met up and, and had some, you know, a lot of fun, to be honest. But the sunset wasn't amazing, and I wanted it to look a little bit more amazing. Um, now, the stuff I'm going to do in this photo actually makes the sunset colors pop, um, and I actually do it even when it's an exciting sunset. Uh, this one wasn't super exciting, but uh, regardless, beautiful scene. Uh, this was a long exposure, and I forgot to check how long it was. I'm going to call it a minute, maybe 45 seconds. I don't know. But it was a 10-stop filter, which I use all the time. You've probably heard me talk about it. I just love it. And I just smoothed out uh, all the water, smoothed out the sky. Everything's smooth and awesome. So uh, the first thing I did, let me show you actually. That's what the photo started like. So that's my base photo, no edits. Uh, I've hence uh, or henceforth done the um, raw develop filter. This is the raw file. Excuse me. Um, I, I moved the temperature and the tint kind of opposite ways, which I talk about all the time. I uh, added a little bit of contrast, bumped up the shadows, added some clarity. So that, that's basically what got me from the base photo to that. And so I'm liking where I'm going so far. Next, I added a little Accent AI. And to give that a second, it kind of brightened up sort of these darker parts in the foreground. And to me, having foregr foreground, if I could say it, it'd be good. Foreground interest is a good thing because you could go over to the edge of these rocks and stand out there and shoot off and just get the sunset and the water. But I wanted to back up and get some of these channels and sort of the lines and stuff. Um, anyway, something of importance to me in a photo, and that is to have a little foreground interest, and uh, it helps, right? So next was saturation and vibrance. And as you can see, that gave it a little bit of a pop more toward the blue. Um, and that's okay. It's, it's fairly blue to start with, and, and that's all right. I'm okay with that. And then I went on to structure. So I'm moving kind of fast because I'm trying to make these videos a little snappier. However, half the time I get people tell me that I, I speak too fast. So I'm sorry if I'm going to. I, I can't please everybody. I, I, anyway. Okay. So structure. What did I do? Structure. I wanted to bring up the detail and stuff in the rocks. So let me show you my brush. Hey, my light just came on. There's a ghost in my office. Um, you can see where I brushed in this adjustment on the structure. And so uh, basically it just brought up the punchiness of those rocks because um, I like the counter uh, balance, I guess is the word. Um, the detail in the rocks versus the smooth water, especially smooth because I, I shot it a long exposure, right? A short exposure, you'd have choppy water coming in or whatever, but the long exp exposure makes it really smooth and glassy. So I wanted to sort of counter Counterbalance, I guess. Uh, counterbalance. Um, the, the detail of the rocks with the smoothness of the water. So that's why I did that. Next up was Tone. Uh, one of my favorite filters. Uh, I love it, actually. It just gives you so much control over the light in a photo. Here, add a little contrast, a little Smart Tone. Smart Tone I love because it allows you, if you drag it to the right, to sort of brighten the photo. It'll just brighten the dark parts. It won't brighten the stuff that's already bright. And if you go to the left to darken the photo, it'll darken the stuff that's bright but it won't darken that which is already dark. It's a beautiful thing. It's very smart. It's accurately named. Uh, and then I took the highlights down a little bit. Okay, here's where it starts getting kind of fun, and this was messing with some more of the color, right? The beginning of this was kind of light uh, and detail, right? Um, with a little bit of saturation, but then I came into golden hour. And what I wanted to do here was I applied it, not, not heavily, but 35 with a little bump, but I, I added a gradient mask to apply it. So let me just show you by clicking on the mask. You can see I just took a gradient and I just dropped it down in the sky so that the golden hour filter applied only to the sky because down here, there's already some orange in these rocks and adding the golden hour filter just made them a little too orange and unnatural. And I, I'm not looking to saturate every bit of the photo. That wasn't my goal. So 
Um, that's why I did that. And so FYI, you can apply filters not just with the brush, but also with the radial mask or the gradient mask uh, or luminosity mask. You can do whatever you want. It's the power of Luminar. Um, the Brilliance and Warmth filter was next, and I bumped both of those up, gave it some vividness and some warmth. And you can see I'm starting to get kind of a colorful photo, which is, hey, something I like, right? If you only like black and whites, believe me, you're on the wrong channel. Um, but here we go. So there, the colors, I think it's looking pretty cool, my friends. I like it. That's why I did it, right? So, okay, next is color balance. And how many times have you heard you say, might be my favorite filter, but it is, it's so awesome. Um, here, I didn't do anything in the shadows. I did a little bit in the mid-tones, just a tiny smidge of work. And then I bumped up the highlights quite a bit. And the highlights are mostly in the sky. And as you can see, I took the cyan away from cyan and more to the red. And that's basically giving more of an orange-red glow to the sky, right? So let me show you the before. So give that a second. Um, it also bumps up the orange in the rocks, as you can see, because there are some highlights in the rocks because they're a little bit brighter. Um, and then here's the after applying color balance. Just gives a little bit more of that. Um, and I think that color's fine in the rocks. It's not overdone. I don't look at it and say, oh my God, too orange. Um, it's easy to do those things sometimes in Luminar because you start moving sliders. And if you're like me, you're like, ah, oh, that looks awesome. And you just kind of go to the right. You know, it goes to 11. Um, but sometimes you only want to go to three and not 11. So Spinal Tap reference for those of you not in the know. Okay, structure. I used structure again. So I used structure up here before somewhere. There it was. And in that, that version or that implementation of structure, I bumped up the crunchiness of the rocks. But this next one, structure, I went to the left. I went negative. Uh, so negative structure is kind of like denoise. Not exactly. But it's basically a very smoothing sort of filter if you go negative. Uh, and what I did is then I brushed that into the water and the sky. Right, So you can just kind of see there where I masked it in, but that basically allowed me to smooth out the water and the sky more so than um, they were already. And they were already pretty smooth because I was using a 10-stop filter and I ran this for, uh, we're going to call it a minute. I, I apologize. I should have checked, but I don't remember. Uh, but anyway, it's a long exposure, so it's fairly smooth already. And so I'm at the end of this uh, layer, and I went from that to that, and my sunset's kind of popping. I'm liking it. Um, and it's beautiful. And to be honest, it's more so how I remember it. If you ever shoot raw files, and I'm sure you do, and if you don't, I recommend you start shooting in raw, but they often come out like this even when it's kind of colorful. So um, I was able to bring some of that back, which I'm a fan of. And now the next thing I did is add an erase image layer because as you can see, there's a number of things that need erasing. Um, I'm gonna see if I can turn this on. Uh, there we go. Um, there's a big spot here, and there was a spot over here somewhere, but they're all gone. That's the beauty of the eraser tool. You just go into tools and you click on erase. You make your selections and then you click erase and remove it and then you're done. So I did that already. I won't bore you with it. I've got a tutorial on that. If you want to see it, if I remember, I'll put a link in whichever corner it is. Um, and then really I was about done. That's about it for making my sunset pop. But I had one little thing I like to do and that's image radiance. And that's just that kind of romantic glow. It adds a a little bit more contrast and therefore a little bit of shadow back into the photo. So if I turn this filter off, you know, um, you'll see on the rock here, you're seeing a whole lot of the rock. You're getting a lot of the detail up in here. And while I, I like that at the same time, you know, I like to leave a little bit to the imagination, you know, make the viewers want a little bit more, just leave them wanting a little bit. And so I like to add back a little bit of shadow, and I do that in my HDRs. I think I've talked about this in some of my HDR videos, but with HDR, you blend these exposures, and you balance the light, and you're like, wow, everything's perfectly exposed. But in real life, everything's not perfectly exposed. Um, and I kind of want to leave a little bit of that mystery in there. So that's why I add image radiance. In fact, I might would add a little bit more just to give it a little bit of kind of fun kick. And, and that's really it. I mean, that's a, it's a quick... Uh, little tour here of uh, what I did, but I started with a fairly kind of flat photo, to be honest, um, and I think I turned it into something I, uh, that's that's much better. It's it's better to me. Um, I like big color. I think you know that if you've watched any of my videos, but there's the before, there's the after. It's a number of filters on the base layer with some erasing and then a final touch-up of image radiance just to give it a little kick of romantic glow because you know, hey, Scott and I are friends. Um, wasn't exactly romantic, but hey, it is the coast of La Jolla in Southern California, and it's gorgeous. So, um, 
you know, I just like to add that little bit of glow, and that, that's why, uh, why I did that. So there you go, one more time. There's a before, and there's the after, and that's a quickie on making your sunset colors pop in Luminar. I hope that it helps. If you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button. Just hammer it. Just smack the out of it. Just hammer it. Um, leave a comment. Let me know what you think about it. And uh, what else? Share with your friends. Uh, what else can you do? I don't know. Tell your mom. Tell your mom I said hi, too. Um, that's it. I'm kind of rambling. Sorry. Hope you're having a great day wherever you are. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Take care, my friends. See you soon. And what am I going to say? Come on. Adios. See you later.